You've opened the door to the janitor's domain, a broom closet full of wonders. Beyond the plungers, brooms, and unknown items of disgust are memories of the past. The memories you are about to hear are not for the faint of heart. The memories are meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Prepare yourself for Tales from the Janitor. Oh, hello there. You really snuck up on me. I didn't hear you at all. Kind of had something rattling around in my noggin. Ah, oh, jeez. Some of these stains are hard to get out. Blood is always the worst. Don't worry, though. It's not my blood. I actually don't know whose blood this is. My boss, Mr. Holmes, is always bringing guests around. I met a lot of people. I think people just don't understand him the way I do. There are a lot of urban legends about him. Did you know that urban legends have been around since man first learned how to communicate? They have many different names. Tall tales, old wives tales, myths, the list goes on and on. I asked you here today because I want to discuss them. What do you need to do, you might ask? Absolutely nothing. Just listen, as I will tell the stories in a very unique way. Buckle up as we will be traveling the globe and learning about the stories. We'll dwell deep into the stories to hear what happened. We just won't be talking about them, but actually experiencing them. How do we experience them, you might ask? <laughs> well, you're just going to have to wait and find out. For our first story, let's travel to Oxford, Alabama. Where? Well, they have the Hell's Gate. What you were about to hear is, well, on the fantastical side. Doesn't mean it's not true, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't get to talk to many people. On with the show! <laughs> oh. to get home. Relax, I'll be ready to leave soon. Come on, Bobby. Quit messing around. I have to get home. All right, guys, little lady has spoken. She's got a big day tomorrow. We'll be back next weekend. Thank you, Bobby. I know you'll make it up to me. So I can think of a couple of ways. Only a couple? <laughs> I can think of a couple that I would like to do right now. You save those thoughts for later. I thought you were taking me home. I am taking you home. This way is just quicker. Well, you're not going across the bridge, are you? I don't know any other way to cross the river, so yeah, we're crossing on the bridge. Don't take us on the bridge, Bobby. It's night time. Oh, come on now. You don't believe that story, do you? Well, my cousin once had a friend's sister whose cousin's stepbrother who saw it. Uh, so just because your cousin's friend's sister whose cousin's stepbrother saw it, you believe it? Well, they said... Once you get on the bridge and you turn around, you'll see the fiery gates of hell. Well, here's the bridge now. I'm going to prove you wrong. I don't see the gates of hell, Sally. Get out yourself. Take a look. I'm not moving. Oh, come on. There's nothing to be afraid of. I am not moving. Suit yourself. I was just trying to show you there's nothing here. All I see is the sun setting and birds flying about. Hey, did you spill something? I haven't moved. My seat's all wet. Your seat is all wet? 
Yeah, like someone just got finished swimming and sat down in my seat. Hold on, I think I got a towel or shirt in the back. Bobby, no! Sally? We, uh, we gotta go. What is it? Nothing, we just gotta go. Get me off this bridge, Bobby! I'm trying! I'm trying the truck roll start! Sally, what are you doing? I'm not standing here! I'm not turning around! I'm making a run for it! Many years ago, a young couple lost their lives on that bridge. On a dark night, if you stop on the bridge and turn off all the lights, a member of the dead couple will get into the vehicle, leaving a wet spot on the seat. Supposedly, the water filters fast into the seat, leaving evidence of the presence of the couple that had lost control of their car and drowned in that water below many years ago. These days, the rustic bridge has been deemed unsafe. It's now blocked with cement barriers, making it impossible for cars to drive onto it. <laughs> I guess we'll never know if the Hell's Gate is still working or not. Our second story takes us to the town of Abbeville, where mothers rush their children home at night. They don't want them to see Huggin' Molly. Forty-eight? Forty-nine? Fifty! Ready or not, here I come! You didn't have to count to fifty, Henry. We're playing tag, not hide and seek. Let him count. I need to catch my breath. I'm going to get you. You're not going to catch me. Ah! Time out! Time out! No time outs in tag. But I fell! Don't care. You're it. I'm going to get you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> You're not going to get me. <laughs> I hate being it. Let me tag one of you. The object is not getting tagged. Tag your it, Billy. I don't want to play anymore. We should be going home. We got time. It's not that late. You're just saying that because you're it. I see the sun setting. Maybe we should be getting home. Oh, come on, you guys. I can't believe that you actually believe that some old woman is just going to come out of the woods and grab one of us. She... she, she doesn't grab us. She, she... she hugs us. You're afraid of a woman wanting to hug you. Excuse me, children. Do you know... It's... it's... it's hugging Molly! Why don't you run, child? I'm not afraid. You should leave. The mothers want their children to hurry home at dark. The legend of the witch-like Huggin' Molly was a helper. For children, she was downright frightening. Legend claims a phantom woman would appear to children, but only at night. She would squeeze them tightly, then scream in their ears. She never harmed them, other than perhaps causing some ringing in their ears. The figure was as much as seven feet tall, wearing dark clothing and a wide-brimmed hat. One version of the story claims Molly was the ghost of a woman who had lost an infant who dealt with the tragedy by hugging local children. Another states Molly was a professor at the former Southeast Alabama Agriculture School who was trying to keep students safe by keeping them off the streets at night. For our next story, we travel to Selma, where we have the story of someone just vanishing right in front of their eyes. The farmer's name was Orion Williamson. Have you heard about him? Have you seen him? Mama, I'm thirsty. Can I get some water? 
Go ahead, dear. Can you grab some for your father, too? He looks hot. Yes, Mama. Thank you, sweetie. Hi, neighbors. I got the water, Mama. Thank you. Just put it on the table, will you? Wave to your father. Hi, Papa. I asked some water for you. Hey, Ryan. Crop, it's looking good. Honey, why don't you go give that water to your father? Where is he? He's in. Where did he go? Orion. 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 I bet you he playing games. Go help me look for him. Okay, Mama. Papa. Papa. Where did your husband go? He was just waving at us, and then he just disappeared. Ah, 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 ah. I can't find him, Mama. We will keep looking. I will help. He was just standing right here, and now it's just vanished. Anyone seen anything yet? Nothing yet. You keep looking. I'll head into town and get the police and maybe some more people. Please hurry. Papa! 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 You find anything, sweetie? Nothing, Mama. Keep looking. Maybe he's hurt. Papa! 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 <sighs> uh, the police and some townspeople are coming right behind me. Hi, right, people. Right out and start walking. Look at everything. It has to be out here somewhere. One hot July afternoon in 1854, a farmer named Orion Williamson was walking on his farm near Selma. Reportedly, Williamson's wife and family were on the front porch of the farmhouse. Then, neighbors passed by and waved to Williamson, who was walking in ankle-deep grass. Orion waved back before vanishing, right before the eyes of his family and neighbors. The party ran to the site, frantically searching, but found no sign of Williamson. Soon, a search party was formed, and 300 men are said to have combed the fields well into the night. In the days to come, people came from far and wide to see where the farmer vanished. One visitor was young journalist and future author Ambrose Bierce, who would document the case in his story, The Difficulty of Crossing a Field. Ironically, Bierce himself would disappear circa 1914. According to the Williamson legend, Mrs. Williamson and her son could hear Ryan's voice calling for help. The cries grew fainter as the weeks passed before finally stopping. For our next story, we travel to Red Level, a place that is known to have hellhounds, a shrieking banshee, and even reports of a whole ghost unit marching to battle. Uh, there, there's even a story of a haunted outhouse. <sighs> Did you watch the game last night? <laughs> <laughs> Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Did you see that one move that running back did? He broke that linebacker's ankles. Uh, yeah, I couldn't believe that the safety caught him and stopped him for the touchdown. Oh, golly. Yeah, but we scored on the next play. Yeah, I think we could have scored more. Why? The third string was put in the second quarter. Yeah, I know. It, it just would have been nice to score, honey. 
Oh man, the score was 63 to 7. I think we scored enough. Hey, do you hear that? Man, I can't hear a thing over this dang truck. It sounds like a drum and people marching. Oh, golly, the dang truck died. Bruce, come out here and take a look. Oh, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing uh, a bunch of Confederate troops marching past the church? Yeah. Oh, my. Look at the swings. Uh, Earl, why you suppose them swings is moving? There ain't no wind right now. Oh, I... I, I can't move. Oh, oh, neither can I. Oh, oh, sh- uh, wh- what are we going to do? Oh, I, I pray. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. No, what are we going to do? Help. I don't think we need to tell anyone what we saw. Yeah, Earl, I am not going to any loony bin. Oh, oh I, I, didn't, I didn't see or hear anything. Uh, no, in fact, I, I'll just walk to the next cans. Yeah, no, you didn't see anything. You didn't see a thing. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. You didn't see a thing. That's a really nice ride. Oh, what? Ah, oh, I, uh, oh, I gotta stop drinking so late. Churches are havens of safety, places of welcome and respite, a heavenly pathway to God. But that doesn't mean they can't have their own tales of unexplained happenings. According to the legend, the red-eyed hellhounds, shrieking banshee, and the haunted outhouse all call the Consolation Cemetery near Red Level their home. Some legends seem to have transferred to nearby Oakey Street Methodist Church, where people say they've heard the marching of a ghostly Confederate unit and witnessed a ghost rider in a black 1964 Ford truck. Oakey Street Methodist Church, built in the 1880s, a name for the plethora of oak trees surrounding it is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is still in use. The cemeteries are closed after dark and ghost hunting visits are discouraged because of the potential for vandalism. In our last stories, we travel to Huntsville where we come across two stories, both involving children. Come on, Paul. There is a playground over there. Let's stop and let the kids out. They can play a little bit while we stretch our legs. You're right. 30 minutes, then we're back on the road. You hear that, kids? Dad's gonna let you play for a little bit. I said 30 minutes only. Stay where we can see you. Oh, you worry too much. You need to relax. Jan, I'm gonna worry. You know what's going on in Vietnam. Bobby got his notification in the mail last week. Paul, the government is not going to want some big, tough guy like you. They're going to want those farm boys up north. We all bleed the same. Doesn't matter. My only crime was being born black. Or being born black in Alabama. I'll 
just tell Uncle Sam that you can't go. You can leave Alabama, but Alabama never leaves you. Oh, yeah? You can't ride two horses with one ass. What are you going to... Where are the kids at? David? Uh, Nancy! Uncle Sam ain't going to take me, because when I find those kids, I'm going to beat them. Don't say that. Hell of a look for them. What do you think I'm doing? David! Nancy! When I find those kids, they ain't going to be able to sit down for a week. Paul, get over here quick! What? You see them? No! It's... Nancy's doll. She never leaves this alone. David! Nancy! (laughs) Adjoining Huntsville's historic Maple Hill Cemetery is a playground. It looks much like any other, featuring a swing set and pavilion. But this playground (laughs) isn't like others. Passers-by often say they can see the swings moving on their own volition as well as orbs or spectral figures. Legend says the spirits of the children buried in the cemetery, founded in 1822, come there to play. Some also like to repeat the myth that children were buried in the playground following a series of abductions in the 1960s. It's known as the Dead Children's Playground. In our final tale this evening, we discuss the grave of Sally Carter. Anyone attending school in Huntsville through 1982 likely made a visit to Sally Carter's grave. According to legend, Sally was a teenager visiting her sister, Mary Ewing, at Cedarhurst Mansion in 1837 when she took ill and died. She was buried in the family cemetery at the South Huntsville Estate. Her headstone read, My flesh shall slumber in the ground to the last trumpet, joyful sound, and burst the chains of sweet surprise, and in my Savior's image rise. Thick Sally. Remember to fix me. Mm, okay. Fix. Remember Sally. Last night, I better go out and see the damage before Paul yells at me. I have to check that gravestone. Okay, it's right here. Right here where the dream told me it would be. It fell down. Let me put it back up. <coughs> there you go, Sappy. Rest now again. My flesh shall slumber in the ground till the last trumpet's joyful sound. Then burst the chain to its sweet surprise and in my Savior's image rise. Sightings of Sally's ghost started in 1919, when a teenage boy who was staying at the mansion had a dream about her. In the dream, Sally came to him and told him to fix her tombstone, which had been toppled over during the previous night's storm. Sure enough, when he went to visit her tombstone the next morning, it had been knocked down. Oh, sweet home Alabama is full of other stories that we didn't get a chance to hear today. But we may venture back, and we'll listen to more stories from the area. But I need to change my clothes. Mr. Holmes got arrested. I need to find another job. I got a lead on working with McCluskey Brothers in Juneau. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, but where we're going next is a little cold. I'll see you in Alaska. Take care, 
and stay alive. <laughs> 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 Ha, ha, ha.